lights are on. It's all to race for. Coming to turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's done it too. Hello and welcome to the GFinity Arena, the home of the F1 Esports Pro Exhibition. So glad you could join us because tonight, 20 of the best pro sim racers from around the world are going head to head in the Azerbaijan Baku Street Circuit. I cannot wait to get to it. And joining me on the desk is, of course, the ever present and bringing us the thrills and spills is, of course, Sky F1 presenter Natalie Pinkham. Um, how are you doing? And Baku means a lot to you, right? You can't wait to get to this. Yeah, it's a crazy place. It's stunningly beautiful. You've got this medieval architecture mixed in with massive gold brand new spanking buildings and then you've got this racetrack this Herman Tilke designed racetrack which is the second longest on the calendar after Spa and incredibly quick top speed of 360 kilometers per hour and there is always drama so I love it yeah sort of drama as in like EastEnders a sort of level of drama street fighting drama okay perfect I'm looking forward to this well listen uh, just to bring you up to speed if you missed what happened two weeks ago uh, they gave us a master class in tactics when they headed to Monaco and the eSports exhibition race is underway. Tanitza from pole position. Brendan Lee with a much better getaway, though, straight up into the lead. And then Lucas Blakely trying to follow through as well, not able to do so. Will they all make it through turn number one? They will, but it's Brendan Lee who's got the jump on David Tanitza. And into the pits comes Brendan Lee. So this is the direction they're going in. Very, very early pit stops. He will complete that one. David Tanitza up into the lead. Had Dad has come oh, he's been held. Brendan Lee's been held so long in the pits. This could cost him so many positions. Oh, he's been jumped by Blakely, by Berezne. Oh, oh Blakely. Blakely's going through. Lucas Blakely is going through. And he gets ahead of David Tanitza. Can Tanitza get close enough into turn one? Oh, it's going to be risky. Not been, he's not been this close all race long. Is there a tap there? There's certainly a lot of momentum. Are they going to go side by side up the hill? Contact between the pair that will eventually be battling out for the lead. We are on to the last lap with Lucas Blakely looking for his first win at this level. David Tanitza, the reigning champion, directly behind. Corner nicely there. Brings it to the Raskas. One corner remains. Lucas Blakely, what a performance in qualifying. And here we go. He's made it work in the race as well. Outrageous strategy. And Lucas Blakely crosses the line to win a phenomenal, phenomenal race in Monaco. What a performance. So there you have it then. Monaco was epic. It had a bit of everything. David Tanitza returned to form for him. We've been sort of waiting for that form to come back again. And then, of course, Lucas Blake to get in that first win. But, but it's finally good to see David Tanitza getting a bit of uh, race form. Absolutely. And the place they all want to do it is Monaco because it is such a difficult circuit to master. Baku is obviously another street circuit. Very different, though, particularly in terms of speed. So it'll be really interesting to see if they can build on that momentum and take it into Azerbaijan. Yeah, now there's a few. A driver... A lineup changes cannot wait to show you this uh, part one uh, we've broken it down for you what is very exciting about there Jana Otmir comes in for the Alfa Romeo recently just signed for them formerly uh, last season in the 2019 F1 Esports Pro Series uh, he was with Renault but that means of course Badia Boromond is now out of the picture and he was performing so well yet the talent is there when you just look at that formerly a Renault Sports Academy driver before moving into sim racing it's a great signing but I feel like I'm a little bit disappointed for uh, Mr. Boromon. He, he'd done so well. Yeah, and fair play to him. He tweeted his support to Jano Otmir, who, you know, as you can see, does come with a lot of credibility and talent. You know, he, he was fourth in the 2019 eSports. He won in Hockenheim, uh, part of the Renault Sport Academy in 2017. Been karting since he was four years old and um, taking the Dutch Championship titles 2009, 2010, 2011. Um, you know, 2016, he was in Formula 4 and had seven wins and 13 podiums, so he's no slouch. No, indeed. Uh, he's, he tweeted, can't wait to get started, uh, but he's going to feel like um, he's got to prove something tonight in some way. That pressure will be on him. They've all got to prove something, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, you know, the pressure is on, and as you can see with all these uh, driver movements, uh, it's pretty ruthless stuff, but, you know, it sets you well up for racing in the real world. Indeed. Right, then, uh, let's look at part two, then, of the drivers. Um, now, uh, you can make a little bit of a notice there, Lucas Blakely, we know he did fantastic... Uh, 
uh, in last uh, two weeks ago race, uh, Brendan Lee uh, winning in China, uh, obviously exciting there, but there is a completely different lineup for Williams. And, and this is what I love about this, and I don't know if you feel the same, Natty, with the F1 Esports Pro Series, there's a guy there, the two of them, they've got a chance to show what they're capable of because the draft will be happening later in the year, that will be happening, and they've got a chance to cement themselves in an, an F1 Esports team. I think that's the point, isn't it? There is so much depth in talent. There's always somebody breathing down your neck for your position, so every opportunity you have, you've just got to deliver. Mm, indeed. Now, the uh, obviously, they saw so Shanaki Clay, a part of the Pro Draft 2019, didn't get selected, hasn't gone away and gone, right, I'll, I'll move on, but he, he's come back again, so he'll be hoping to get a, a good mm. opportunity. And, and Roy Arnott said um, it's a tough race because this is the best of the best he's going against, but he's going to give it everything, so uh, watch him. However, Lucas Blakely, we didn't mention him enough about Monaco, his first ever win. This is what he tweeted. He cannot believe, he's put it in uh, capitals as well, uh, first <laughs> he's ever. <shouting> <laughs> <it>. He's <laughs> yeah. shouting. And, and I know that he's an emotional guy. When he first got drafted, uh, he missed out, like I just mentioned about uh, Shanaka Clay. He came back, got selected. But the talent's there, and, and, and we really felt it when we interviewed him, how, how, how much it meant to him. Yeah, what a lovely guy. Now, he's been building up strong results through the season. A P6 in Spain, a P5 in Vietnam, and then a podium in Holland. And it's great to see him get that victory. As we all know, Monaco means so much to them. And, yeah, boy, was he happy. Yeah, and, and there's also another driver for McLaren, uh, Nathan Moore, coming through as well. Three times he's qualified for the draft, never been picked. So this is the moment, you know, Nathan, you know, deliver. You might <laughs> get picked so it's got a bit of as everything if he's in this not feeling enough pressure as it <laughs> is I've, thanks I've put, for that i've put more pressure on his plate uh listen uh, it is time now to pass over to our commentators of course alex uh, jakes and mr matt gallagher gentlemen looking resplendent up in the arena how are you feeling about tonight resplendent <laughs> That's how I'm feeling about tonight. So many good names there. As you've said, people trying to get themselves noticed by the teams and then uh, maybe further towards the front. Quite a big battle between the names that we already know. Yeah, and Matt, obviously, uh, we go back to day one of the F1 Esports Pro Series. We're keeping our distance massively at the moment, which uh, I, I don't mind at all. However... Well, it pained me, uh, but no worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, there are those drivers there that, that, like Alex says, is their chance tonight. I don't feel I put too much pressure on them, have I? No, I don't think they listen to you, Tom, about uh, whether they're going to be pressured or not. But uh, Bardia Boromund is, you know, it's a shame that he's not racing. But I think that, you know, as he tweeted, that he, he kind of accepts the fact that this is a, a platform for, for, for teams to basically test out their talent. So uh, he's pretty much set the benchmark. Can Yana Watmir challenge that? He's going to have to beat Danny Berezny, I think, as a, as a pretty decent start. Yeah, well, listen, from Natalie and I down at the desk, we pass it over to you. Looking forward to quality. Yeah, qualifying then so important, even around a track like this, because the standard has been, as we've seen in the previous races, so very high. So you need to give yourself a huge opportunity, even with that long flat to the floor stretch down a turn one where you can have so many overtaking opportunities. Right now, Jano Otmir has, uh, well, he set down a benchmark pretty nicely, but he's not ahead of Brendan Lee, who has the fastest time at the moment, a 136.4. Not too much between them at all. Frederick Rasmussen, we always expect him to be there or thereabouts in the Red Bull. Indeed, he is a 136.5 ahead of last year's champion, David Tanitza, with a 136.5 as well. Exactly as we'd expect, Matt. Super close, super competitive, and good to see Jano Otmir immediately up there. What a lineup Alfa Romeo have with uh, Boromand, Jano Otmir, and Danny Berezne. It's ridiculous how quick those guys are. So you have to say, when we look to the next Pro Series, they are very much in the pound seats. Uh, having a look, obviously, at David Tanitza, currently P4, and on a 136.5, only, well, one-tenth off pole, as we've got so accustomed to in qualifying. It's thousands. It's uh, the width of a piece of paper between the few of them. So great to see him up there. And Enzo Benito, not too bad in the other Ferrari, P10 currently. Uh, but, yeah, Ferrari, they've, they've lacked a little bit of... Um, a second gunner in the Pro Series previously. So with Enzo Benito, they've definitely got a solid pick there. Enzo just really needs to start bringing himself even further up the grid to get people to start talking about him and also to deliver some points. Yeah, Enzo Benito, his previous record in the eSports events has been one podium, one pole and one fastest lap. So needs to uh, take it up a couple of gears, but I'm sure he'll be trying to do that from what is at the moment P10 after his initial effort. We're focusing on... Uh, Mr. Haddad making his way through the final real corner of note, then it's flat to the floor. And then just thinking of minimizing 
the uh, change of angle there. And then not much to do, really, other than think about what you're having for dinner later on. Go up through the gears, pull some DRS. And where is this effort uh, going to put him? Up to P3, so a terrific effort to go ahead of Freddy Rasmussen and uh, lead right now the second row on the grid. The exact same time as Jano Otmir. As again, F1 Esports, just look at it. Look how close they are. Danny Bereznik gets all out of shape uh, out of turn one exit, and that, that is what costs him. I wouldn't be surprised now if he doesn't improve just from that one tiny mistake, which would cost him a tenth, maybe a tenth and a half. And then that's it. You know, the rest of the lap, he's going to have to push extremely hard in order to get uh, to make that time back up. And another thing very crucial in this qualifying session is whether they get a bit of a slipstream. Because yes. look how long that back straight is. And we've seen it in previous F1 Esports uh, races around here where the teammates will help each other. They're not doing that this time round. And we've, we've seen it in the other races. They're, they're not helping their teammates as such because there's, there's not as much on the line. But right now, Danny Bresne and everyone else currently trying to set a lap time, they want to... They want to kind of be there about a second, second and a half to just get a tiny bit of slipstream. We don't want to be too close that you get dirty air. It's, it's a ridiculous juggling game. Some of them, Danny Bresne being one of them, just gets on with it. And uh, if he's following somebody, for example, that's on an outlap in front of him, I imagine they will just go, well, no, I'm just going to get out of your way. Don't you worry about me. I'm not giving you a slipstream. So, yeah, all to play for. And uh, interesting to see if anybody does get any sort of slipstream. So we saw the mistake on the exit of turn number one for Danny Bresne. And has that cost him a chance to improve? Up through the gears, flat to the floor, building up the speed all the time. Will he be heading up the timing page? Not long to wait to find out. And it's a Rasmussen, Haddad, Otmir and Lee ahead as he comes up to the line. Is he able to improve? He's not only <laughs> able to improve, he's able to go fastest. I genuinely was going to say, after saying all of that, I guarantee he now goes pole. <laughs> and he does. And what he a has. lap. What a lap from Danny Bresne, because there was that mistake, so there is still a little bit more time in there yeah. for Danny. And uh, it's, it's quite obvious they're going to improve if they carry on uh, for their lap, because they won't be doing two lap qualifying stints. If they've messed up their lap, they'll just dive straight into the pits. So Danny Bresne, what a lap. And it's currently yeah. an Alfa Romeo 1-2. Yeah, Jano Otmir up to P2 with an improvement as well. Everyone else in the 36 fours or slower. Here's David Tanitza trying to improve. Some of Vikang has gone up to P3 in, uh, in the Haas. And David Tanitza then trying to, trying to improve. Everyone finding time out there. Everyone lowering their times as we tick through the session. Got a yellow flag in sector one and two. That's not where the Ferrari is on track right now. So David Tunitza about to cut the beam. Is he able to improve? Yes, he is, to the front row with a 136.3. And that would be a pretty interesting grid if it was to stay that way, but we have seen there is lap time out there. And uh, here's a driver that's being competitive with his new team and using all of the wall there. You don't want to be doing that. The damage is realistic for these eSports pros. So clobbering the wall in a way that would have slowed him down. The Renault driver at the final stage of the lap, and he is, at the very least, looking to break into the top ten. Let's have a look then. Nicholas Longay, as you say, very competitive driver and has been up there uh, in the previous races. Currently in P11, which is not where you want to be around such a hectic circuit in the mm. first couple of laps. And he goes up to P8, so not too bad, 36.5. As I say, only two tenths of a second off Danny Boresne currently, but down in P8. Closer, but still very much in that sandwich of, of lots of cars, because we've seen in the previous races in F2, uh, you know, it gets very, very hectic into those first couple of corners. It's not a long run down to turn one. But that doesn't mean it gets <laughs> any easier as you head into the middle sector, the castle section. And as you mentioned as well, Alex, you know, that the simulation damage, so any sort of nip on the wall and an end plate could fly off. And, and we saw with Brendan Lee how much that cost him around Monaco. Yeah. He ended up 16 seconds behind the front two. So no damage, please, is what all the uh, race engineers will be telling their drivers. But it is, so, it is so tough around here with the simulation damage on, with how precise you have to be, especially in the section that we've just, uh, we've just gone through. And uh, also the corner that we're coming up to right now. This is so difficult to get right. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if anyone is going to clobber that wall uh, when they are on their final push laps of the session. And we're heading in that direction right now with our most recent race winner, Lucas Blakely. It was so nice to see. The emotion pour out of the British driver, and will he get that 
winning feeling bounce that we see so often. A driver wins for the first time, they get a degree of extra confidence, they get a degree of extra belief. Well, right now he's outside the top 10. He needs to use some of that newfound belief. And, uh, and he, to be honest, he was in this situation in Monaco, wasn't he, two weeks ago. Needed a late lap to get himself in the mix and then did the rest with the strategy during the exhibition race. So similar situation for the driver in the racing point. He'll be hoping for deja vu because we rode on board with him last time at Monaco and saw his lap. So let's see if it uh, continues that way and he wins this race as well. But it's uh, amazing to see and hopefully we'll get to ride on board with him in the middle sector because that's where they have to thread the needle. The castle section is frightening to walk up as a pedestrian, let alone in a <laughs> Formula One car. Uh, although I wouldn't recommend next it's a public road uh, normally. But Lucas Blakely, yep, yeah, uh, he's been... He did a really good qualifying performance, which is which puts him in the position to be able to win Monaco. And it's the same here. You want to be in the top five or six. You can overtake here. And here we go through the castle section. I mean, you couldn't see his front left. And I expected his front left to not be there after turning <laughs> in that early. But no, he flies through. Currently P11. Can he get up into that top five? That's really where you need to be in F1 Esports. But this track, you can overtake. And I imagine there will be a lot of overtakes into turn one with how closely contested these guys are. We could be in for a scorcher. That was super committed on the inside curb through 15, where if it goes wrong, that can easily be the end of your session and ruining someone's lap behind. All the hard work has been completed. Now upshifting to the line. Perezne with the benchmark of a 136.2. Can Lucas Blakely find his way to the top 10, maybe even the top five? Pause and wait to find out as he cuts the beam. And he goes oh. fastest of anyone with a mega lap. And once again, we've featured Lucas Blakely and he has delivered on track. That is super stuff with that winning feeling bounce from Monaco. Brendan Lee was P1 before these runs started. Can he improve to where he was when we initially joined this qualifying session? The two-time champion bringing it to the line and Brendan Lee only able to improve to P6 ahead of Freddy Rasmussen, who is on an outlap right now. And there's a Ferrari uh, recovering to the racetrack there. Couldn't quite see who that was. It'd be Tanitza, yes. He's on his outlap and maybe made some sort of mistake on his outlap or got caught up with somebody else. But either way, Lucas Blakely... Um, and Brendan Lee, they're out of sync with everybody else, it seems. So maybe they messed up a lap earlier on in the session. So I d they're not going to have another opportunity uh, unless for some reason they charge their battery and go for another lap on the same set of tyres, which I wouldn't recommend. But who knows? Lucas Blakely, what a lap. Goodness me. 36.215, very much putting himself in the conversation now as somebody that is not just a, a one-time winner around Monaco. He's got pace around these other tracks. And I'd, like, I'd love to see if he can translate that when we get back into the studio, back in front of the lights, because I've always said it, that it is different racing from home when you have all of those wonderful little uh, things to keep yourself calm and your, your Tom Zillas and everything else that <laughs> David Tanitza has. Uh, but here we go, Freddie Rasmussen on his outlap. Someone that's been a little bit, a little bit off the boil. He, he hasn't really been that, that complete and utter dominant force, that ice-cold Freddie Rasmussen that we've come to know and love in the F1 Esports series. He's just not really been able to get qualifying sorted uh, in the last couple, especially Monaco. That, that was a, a pretty dire performance from him and from his standards. Yeah. He needs to get up into the top three, Alex, or he could have another one of those. Well, he's got a lap to do it right now. The heavy braking down to turn number one. You can see that our pole sitter will set no further time. He's exited this session, so that time to beat a 136.2 around this six kilometer circuit. And Perezne currently hanging on to P2. David Tanitza in P3. Jano Otmir signing for Alpha, immediately showing why they have gone for him with that fourth position. Simon Weigang, that would be an impressive result for him around this circuit. Uh, Brendan Lee able to improve, but only marginally ahead of the driver that we're on board with at the moment. The Flame Towers directly ahead but he's focusing instead on turn number seven, which is very nicely judged indeed. A little bit of a tap of the wall, but no dramas there. This is a corner where it can definitely go wrong, and it very nearly did. Freddy Rasmussen's chance of improving has evaporated. He's lucky he didn't rip a wheel off there. It is so difficult to get that corner right, as we see from the Renault, who has ripped a wheel off to bring out the yellow flags. That was Donoso then, down in 19th place, our runner-up from the first ever F1 Esports series.
out of this qualifying session, down in P19. As we now take a look at David Tanitsa, can he take pole position away from Lucas Blakely? This is his final attempt. We've got no seconds remaining <laughs> in this qualifying session. And he now has not really much to do apart from fly towards the start finish line. Will he improve? He hasn't got much to Kiefer. do. Kiefer, Kiefer's gone up to P2. So it's Berezne down to P3. David Tanitsa in fourth position. Can he improve? Remember, he went through a yellow flag. Shanaka Clay has gone up, and David Tanitsa takes pole. At the last opportunity, he had to do it. The reigning champion takes P1 with a 136-1. Blakely down to second place. Keitha was able to improve. Jano Otmir goes to the front row. Can Danny Berezne improve with these final, final stages? Bono Huis has got himself to seventh position. Lee is ninth, Rasmussen tenth. Can Berezne take pole? He can't, he cannot. And so, with the clock running out, it's David Tanitza ahead of Jano Otmir, Lucas Blakely in P3, and Simon Weigang with a late lap there to get ahead of Berezne. So it was about keeping it out of the wall, it was about track position, and it was about getting the job done. David Tanitza did the lot, and he has taken a super pole position to beat Jano Otmir to the very front of the grid, and it all got very, very dramatic down there at turn eight but it's David Tanitza who has done the job. And it's David Tanitza of the Ferrari team who will start this contest from the very front. So much to talk about there, uh, gentlemen. I was moving my papers. Uh, great work from Matt Gallagher and Alice Jakes. Uh, the, the thing is, though, I said David Tanitza back to form. Here we go. Proving You're take it. You're credit, aren't you? Yeah, well, Matt Gallagher said they don't listen to me, but sometimes <laughs> people do. David Tanitza back to form, and of course, Lucas Blakely as well. Uh, and Jano Otmir, uh, his first race for Alfa Romeo, rather than being at Renault, he formerly was at that team. Great stuff there. Unbelievable, wasn't it? I mean, you know, talk about delivering on your first outing. Well done, Jano Otmir there. Um, and yes, Tanitza, fantastic. All because of you. Yeah, well, listen, I won't take all credit, guys. I'm not going to take all credit. However, Lucas Blakely, it just goes to show winning in Monaco, back to form or, or, or just feeling incredibly confident as we go on board with him now. But uh, at one point, lead in, pole position. But the confidence is clearly there. You start winning a couple of races and then you, you feel like you're invincible. Yeah, I think he'll be a bit disappointed to drop down to P3, won't he? Because, as you say, building on the performance in Monaco and uh, showing that he's very confident now. Um, but just to slip back two places was, was a bit disappointing for him. But those two, Tanitza and Otmir, wow. Yeah. and Delivering when they needed to most. Um, now, David Tanitza finished third uh, in Baku in the F1 Esports Pro Series 2019. The fastest lap time went to Patrick Holtzman uh, of 1.39.33. Uh, so to, to be now down to 1.36, same conditions, it's fascinating. These guys are, are, are just finding those extra seconds wherever they can. Yeah, but I mean, look at that. 1 to 18, all in the 1.36s. That's bonkers. I mean, it just shows the margins are so tiny and the pressure is always being heaped onto your opponents. It's brilliant. You cannot blink. Yeah. You'll miss it. Um, and obviously, as we are on board with Lucas Blakely, watching his lap time here. Uh, so he's down in P11 and jumping, I think, by the end of this to P1. Um, but still, anything can happen in, in, in Baku in a race uh, in terms of what could happen on field positions, jostling for it, that first turn, we know how uh, cautious you have to be around there, and you can't go too wide uh, for those overtakes. Well, listen, we've seen all sorts of chaos on this track over the years um, in the real racing, so yes, absolutely, you, you can't make any mistakes, anything will happen, and, and, and normally does in the race. Mm, OK, so, uh, in terms of David Tanitza, Jano Otmir, they'll be feeling very confident, and, and Alfa Romeo, for them, they made the right decision to bring him in now. Yeah, they'll be taking a big deep breath, just trying to compose themselves now before the race because there was a big jostle for position right at the end of quali there. But yeah, fair play to them. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, they just now need to deliver when it really matters. And I will shout out Matt Gallagher. He did say Enzo Benito does need to put in uh, a few more of those extra performances to prove why he's with the FDA uh, Esports Hoodlock uh, team. And in fourth there, in fourth position, Marcel Kiefer, we know, uh, previously winning uh, into Lagos. Um, so the potential, the talent is there. And, and for a few of the other guys that are new or uh, coming into this, Shinaka Clay uh, in P9, that will give him that confidence knowing this was an opportunity for him to show what he's capable of. 
Absolutely. I mean, look at the Mercedes boys just behind me now in, in P9 and P10. These are guys that we used to seeing at the top of the order. So anything can happen in the race, and they've really got to go all out in the first couple of laps. There will, I'm afraid, be accidents and incidents. It's how they deal with them that matters. Yeah, and be careful of those penalties. Right then, uh, enough from us down at the desk. Let's pass it back over to Alex Chase and Matt Gallagher. Well, it's interesting, Matt, because... I think this is a little bit of a mixed up grid because of what we saw at the very end there with the yellow flag at turn eight in qualifying. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. But right now we have the formation lap underway. David Tanitsa, I, I didn't even notice Enzo Benito in qualifying at the end there, up in P4. Fantastic result for him and get, puts him in a really good position to attack the guys ahead. Will he be able to attack his teammate? We don't know the, the strategy uh, behind there, but right now, we are having a look at David Tanitza just warming up his tyres on the formation lap. And there you can see as well on the tyre graphic, from 13th all the way down to 20th, apart from Roy Onus in 17th, they've all gone for the medium tyres there. So a, a different strategy, which means we should see some different leaders at the start of this race, well, in the middle of this race. Can we see Freddie Rasmussen fight through the field with the driver? He is uh, next to Brendan Lee. They will be looking to carve their way through. Meanwhile, at the front, we have three, four, five red lights around the streets of Baku, and David Tanitza will lead them away from pole. Jarno Otmir will try and turn it into P1. We're away in Baku. Good start for Lucas Blakely, but no momentum. He's made contact with the Red Bull. Nearly a spin there for Marcel Kiefer, who managed to keep it going in the right direction. Meanwhile, up top, Otmir going for P1 immediately. Did not have the momentum. Will they make it through the first couple of corners? Tanitza with the lead. Otmir in the slipstream, though. Blakely trying to go with them to try and make it a three-car battle. Nothing he can do at the moment, though. Tanitza, Otmir, Blakely, Kiefer, Benito, then Clay, uh, Haddad, Tormala, and Rasmussen, who's made a couple of places already, but it did not work out for Brendan Lee, who has dropped way down the order to P18. It's Tanitza, Otmir, and Blakely, though, the top three at the front. Yeah, Danny Perezne, Simon Vigang have both been caught up as well, 18th, 19th, and 20th, so... Their, their hopes for a good result has pretty much been squashed right at the beginning as Lee makes one position up to 17th. But goodness me, that's not where you'd, you'd expect Lee and Berezny to be if you'd uh, tuned into the first season of F1 Esports uh, a few years ago. But at the front, Jarno Opmit, I thought he may have had Tanitza into the first couple of corners, but I think they were just playing it sensible. Opmit wasn't going to go any for anything too radical because he has this long back straight to get into the slipstream of that Ferrari and take him into turn one. Lucas Blakely just holding on in P3, six tenths or so behind. Denoso has a five second penalty already for a severe collision with Presnada. So that must have been pretty hefty and I imagine some damage holding onto that as well. Good run for Jano Otmir. He doesn't have DRS, but he does have that old fashioned slipstream. We go on board with a P2 driver trying to take the race lead. He's not going to be able to do so at this stage, but DRS is going to change things in a few laps time. Tanitza just trying to get into the groove. Uh, Otmir seems to have a lot of early confidence on that opening lap. Uh, Lucas Blakely trying to go with them as well, and they're all waiting. Uh, Simon Vigang, who had such a good qualifying with that three-second time penalty, that will be frustrating for him. Fine margins at the head of the field. He didn't expect anything else with this F1 Esports exhibition race. And well, DRS is going to put a lot of pressure on David Tanitza and it will lead to a DRS train, if you like, behind with everyone having to stay within a second. Otherwise, they're going to be pretty easy meet down to turn number one as you go towards the cityscape in the background. They're currently at turn number seven. Um, Haddad, Rasmussen and Tormala are improving. Uh, all moving up positions there. And uh, Rasmussen has uh, made pretty decent progress early on. He's going to have to make even more. He's got his teammate up in P4 as they begin now to plunge back down the hill. Six drivers in the pits at the end of lap one, which just spells how much damage there was at the start of the race, because I don't think any of them would have wanted to pit at the end of lap one. Right now, Lucas Blakely looking very feisty indeed. He was all over the back of Jarno Otmir coming through the castle section. He's fallen off a little bit due to the dirty air and just the fact that they spread out over those last couple of corners. Jarno Otmir within four tenths of a second of Tanitza. And I imagine the, in these first few laps, Jarno Otmir and Lucas Blakely, they're going to be saving as much battery power, as much ERS as they possibly can. They're not going to be pushing right now. 
They may, may start to push when DRS is enabled, because then it gives them a great opportunity down towards turn one. But why, why rush it? So that's what Otmir and Blakely are probably thinking. Behind that, I reckon they'll probably want to rush a bit more, Kiva <laughs> Benito Rasmussen, uh, to make sure they stay within a second of the front three that right now seem to be pretty much head in this field and Kiefer just slowly but surely falling away from Blakely. DRS in use for the first time and you can see that it has brought Iano Otmir to the very gearbox of the Scarlet Ferrari ahead of him with Lucas Blakely coming in closer as well. So this is going to be high pressured stuff for David Tanitza, the reigning champion from last year with an impressive start to the season and then championship management from there. Uh, hasn't won a race so far. We've had Rasmussen winning two of them. We've had Brendan Lee, we've had Marcel Kiefer, and we've seen the driver that you're on board with at the moment, Lucas Blakely, on the top step for these Pro Drivers exhibition races. But Tanitza will want to put that right before the resumption of the real thing. Roll reversal this time. Tanitza is the hunted, and Blakely is part of the hunting pack. So let's see how Tanitza deals with this, because he's going to have to have a very slippery Ferrari in order to keep Jano Watmir back at the end of this straight and he is close enough as well within four tenths of a second we should see a change of the lead here where's Lucas Blakely going to be in all of this I think a little bit too far back this time and it seems like there's been a bit of an incident from P4 downwards 2.2 seconds to Enzo Benito now in P4 here so, goes. Oh, keepers out yes yes we've got a change there with David Tanitza and that was Tanitza coming to the pits he was so he knew he was going to get past there so he's gone for the strategy and he has immediately responded to the fact that he knew there was very little chance of keeping the lead so Yarlo oh, he's been held slightly in the pits that could be crucial again just like we saw with Brendan Lee at Monaco absolutely Yarlo Otmir up to P1 Lucas Blakely in second position and there's a McLaren off in the background there which I think was Presnader in heading in the wrong direction and recovering. So here's the race leader immediately under pressure from Lucas Blakely, who is a confident man right now. He's loving things with this F1 2019 game. And as you say, Matt, David Tanitza held in the pits when others came in as well. Could that cost him what is essentially, I know he had the race lead when he came into the pits, but that's essentially a, an undercut response to being passed for the lead. So now all the pressure on the laps between Otmir, will he choose to respond immediately? Will Blakely go the same way as the Alpha driver? Will he do the opposite? Strategic decisions to be made. Remember, it was strategic decisions and very good defensive driving that took Lucas Blakely to the top step last time out, something that Jano Otmir is aiming for with his first outing for the famous Alfa Romeo brand. And uh, Benito now up to P3. Strategy is a wonderful thing to see unfold in front of our eyes. <laughs> Right now, David Tanitza does have a little bit of a gap, one and a half seconds to be able to push as hard as he possibly can on those medium tyres. I would be very surprised if Jana Watmir does not pit at the end of this lap. I'm sure his race engineer will be telling him that Tanitza is not being held up. Let's see if they dive into the pits to either of them. Oh, yeah, there you go. Blakely does, but Otmir carries on. So I always thought that Blakely would do the opposite to what Otmir uh, chose there, and he is in, along with Benito along with the Williams behind to promote Nicholas Longue as well in the Renault. He's now up to second position. But where does Blakely come out in relation to David Tanitza? That is important to see. Three-second time penalty for Yoni Tormala. Here is David Tanitza. Ahead. And Lucas Blakely coming out of the pits. And Lucas Blakely ahead, contending with uh, Nathan Moore, but he's got track position. So David Tanitza immediately after being passed for the lead bailed to the pits but the in lap of Blakely more impressive than the out lap of Tanitza and that is a move for track position and David Tanitza will just be sighing in that car not this again he's got to look at the rear wing of the racing point just like he did for lap after lap after lap in Monaco he's going to have to pass him again right now having to try and get past uh, Nathan Moore and I think he's going to thread his way past the Papaya McLaren Yano Otmir is putting in some crucial laps will he go again surely this time he heads to the pits with uh, his two rivals for race victory today already in to change tyres. This is very interesting. So Jan Otmir, I imagine, will come out behind these two with the fact that he's extended his soft stint, but he, oh, Freddie Rasmussen's out of the race from Both P14. Red Bulls. Both Red Bulls. Disaster. Out of the race. Kiefer, who was contending at the front, and now Rasmussen as well. And this is a circuit that can bite you with even a tiniest mistake. So Jan Otmir 
Is he... I think he's gone again. He must... No, he's, he's gone to the pit. So the response comes. And from the race lead, will he be able to jump the pair that he was racing? Remember, he was in P2, was passing uh, Tanitza, and then Blakely was in but third position. Oh, he's being held. He is being held. Why is he being held? Did he have a penalty? Here he comes. And Lucas Blakely, Lucas Blakely is going to do it again with the strategy. And Lucas, Lucas Blakely takes the lead from Jarno Otmir. Otmir ahead of Tanitza, which is what was going to happen anyway when they battled a few laps to go down to turn one. But Blakely, once again, with the in laps, with the out laps, has done the job with the strategy and has the net lead of the race. Yeah, I don't think Jarno was actually held, just a slight graphical glitch there. He comes out in, well, what will be net P2, but do you want to be, have, do you want to have track position around Baku? I'm not so sure. Uh, Lucas currently running in P4. He has three medium runners ahead of him of Holtzman, Tormela and Longe. But for me, Blakely has a real job on his hands if he's not going to give up that track position. Jarno Otmir has one lap fresher tyres than Blakely. Tanitza, who's the one that pitted the earliest, has the oldest medium tyres. So, I, well, the Ferrari driver has an absolute mountain to climb if he wants to win this race. Right now, Otmir is in the pound seats. Very good soft stint to go an extra lap and still be within this fighting pack. So, well... We're going to have a very interesting next seven laps or so. That corner there, if you're wondering, it is strict corner cutting rules, but that's one of the corners the drivers can take a little bit more liberties over, and that's why you'll see constantly those, them doing it, because if you can get away with it, they'll absolutely do it. They want to gain as much time as they possibly can, as Jarno Otmir closes in on Lucas Blakely and could have a chance down towards Turn 1. This is the definition of a finely poised race, with the driver in fifth right now, battling for what he hopes will be the race lead. We've got a giant wing mirror in the way. That's not where he's looking. He's looking directly ahead. He's looking to try and pass the racing point. Lockups for them as they go through, but well judged by Lucas Blakely, who has fended off one DRS attack. And you can see David Tanitza going with the Alfa Romeo as well. Nicholas Longay leads, but has yet to stop. Same applies for Tormela. Same applies for Holtzman. So this is the battle for the lead. And once again, Lucas Blakely with a nicely judged exit. And if he can keep doing that, it's a big if, though. If he can keep doing that, he could be on for a second win in a row. Well, that is a big task on his hands, uh, Alex, because... It sounds like you doubt that it's possible. I don't Matt. doubt it. It's definitely possible. But <laughs> Jano is currently uh, just guiding the racing point around this track at the moment. And crucially, David are very much within that second window as well. If he falls out of DRS... I imagine it'll be a very difficult task for Tanitza. But right now, his tyres are very much still in shape at the moment. We're lap 7 of 13. They're all very much in their window of tyre grip. Tanitza will hit that cliff first. But right now, yeah, very close indeed. Seven tenths covering what will be the net race lead. We should see Longay, Tormler and Holtzman in the pits in the next couple of laps. But oh, it's just great to see the different strategy. Jotmir a little bit out of shape there into that downhill left-hander, which could give Tanitza the opportunity, because right now you want to be P2 in this pack, because you get the slipstream and the DRS from the car in front, and you get to defend from behind as well. So right now, Otmir's in the pound seats. Will Tanitza try and take that away? Well, Otmir has DRS as well, so who knows? It could be very <laughs> close. But let's get some answers then on this flat-out section to complete another lap. Longe into the pits. This will soon be the battle for the lead. Holtzman has taken over the battle for the lead. Otmir closing in all the time as they hit the widest possible line over the kerb into turn one. Blakely ahead. You can see Otmir beginning to apply even more pressure. Keeping a car behind in Monaco is one thing. Keeping a car behind around the streets of Baku, another thing entirely. And Otmir just trying to judge where he can send one to the inside in the next few laps as we count down to the final stages. You can see now he's just ramping up that pressure, judging it really nicely at the moment. But it can't be a half-hearted lunch because we have seen the, uh, the third-place driver take two cars already today. So it will be interesting to see David Tanitza just hanging back a little bit there. They do not want to trip over each other and open the door for the reigning champion. Holtzman uh, running the long strategy, will come into the pits. Uh, fair that you'd expect him to come into the pits as uh, Presnader exits the race. So Blakely 
and Otmer and Tanitza are all very much in a measuring process at the moment, although Tanitza's made a little bit of a mistake out of the castle section, which means he's fallen slightly behind Otmer, so close now. This is the closest he's been with without DRS doubt. enabled. Without doubt, he's almost pushing the racing point round that penultimate corner. And we now come on to the straight, but will Blakely get the, the DRS from the car in front? He won't, 1.3 oh, seconds. That's what he was looking for. It's going to be tough to defend if you're Lucas Blakely because this will soon be the race lead. Holtzman will pit from P1, and now this could be a change for the battle of the lead then. Obmir, wait for it. It's P2 right now. Now it's the race lead, and he's managed to find a way through. He's managed to get the car slowed down, and Jano Obmir, on his first start for Alfa Romeo, goes past the racing point, and he's just got a few laps to go. The response here from Blakely is going to define who wins the race. Big push now. This is where Otmir will use all the grip he has available, and Tanitza looks like he wants P2 as well, but crucially, Blakely has that DRS to defend, and right now, Otmir has to push as hard as he possibly can without clipping a wall, without being stupid into the Baku Castle section, and he needs to try and push that gap as much as he possibly can. Can he break a second? Even then, they still get a bit of slipstream, but right now, it's half a second. Otmir is pushing pushing as hard as he possibly can to try and break the toe. So right now, Otmir with that move for the lead. Blakely just trying to stay there because he has had some excellent exits from turn 16. It's getting up beyond the margin he would want right now. Half a second, if it goes any further, it's going to be very, very difficult to respond on this next lap. That's his aim after being passed for the lead. Something that Tanitza was not able to do in Monaco. And are we going to get another different winner? This time with Jano Otmir on the top step. It's been a great lap for him to pull away, but he is still within the DRS range, which is good news if you're Lucas Blakely. And David Tanitza, as they come through the fast sweepers at the end of the lap, can Jano Otmir stay ahead? Maybe not uh, by turn one, but turn three, that is where all the efforts of Blakely are about to be put. He's also got to watch his mirrors for the driver we're on board with right now, David Tanitza. Yep, Blakely's done very well to stay with Otmir, despite the slight tyre disadvantage. I think Blakely needs the track position, really, because as we get to the final lap, that's when Otmir will still have his tyres just in that better state than Blakely and Tanitza. He needs to get stuck in, so I wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be surprised if the Ferrari driver tries to make a move on Blakely if he gets one sniff of an opportunity but it's just so, just so painful for Tanitza because he has DRS, Blakely has DRS, so it's even more difficult to make an overtake happen. And if anything, we might see three wide into turn one. That's what I'd love to see, actually. <laughs> That's not what we might see. I'd We're, love to see. We are always demanding more. <laughs> it's been a good lap from Lucas Blakely, but it did not bring him anywhere near being able to make a move there. So uh, Otmir will be cheered by that enormously with that tyre life advantage, with the track position, with the laps counting down and seeing that he was able to just nail those exits from turn, uh, the exit of turn one, uh, the exit of turn two as well. And Lucas Blakely will have to regroup and think of something else because right now David Tinitz is going to be aware that he needs a big response at this part of the circuit. This is where they really need to take risks because when you come out of turn 16, that is really all you're about to do for the next few seconds of your life, because then it's just upshifting. It's getting the DRS. The driver will hear the tone. They will get the DRS. Blakely just can't break inside that four tenths of a second Close before he gets to DRS. Could have a chance into turn one here, Alex. So on board with the P3 man. He's got a great view of the battle for the lead, as have we. Now, he's going to try and come back. It was all about that turn 16 exit. And this time, Lucas Blakely, after fighting for a couple of laps, has found a way to retake the lead. Otmir looked controlled. He looked cool out front. But Blakely, all about that exit from not only turn 15, then turn 16. And he has found a way with DRS to get ahead. Blakely fights back. This race has absolutely flown by. We're lap 11 of 13 already and I'm just trying to work out exactly how many tenths it needs to be in order to be a, a photo finish, <laughs> uh, which I think we might see as if it continues this way, this three-way fight. And it's just watching at the moment. What's he going to do with these next couple of laps? And, well, you can just see Blakely doesn't have the pace that Otmir does out in front. Otmir is pretty much pushing him round once again, three tenths of a second through this middle sector. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a change of the race lead once again, but it has to be around four, four and a half tenths coming out of turn 16. 
15 and you might be safe but we don't know it depends how much uh, battery power you save as well because yep. if, you, if you're leading the, uh, the the pack here like lucas blakely is he's using probably a lot of his battery power to just bring along Otmir and tanitsa who are most likely going to be in lower power modes and if we look very closely at the steering wheel you can see that Otmir has a lot of battery power left 87 percent <laughs> as i put my eyes to the screen <laughs> Yeah, 87 percent and he's using some of it here you can see heading down into the 70s p1 man ahead lucas blakely race winner last time around the streets of monaco trying to win on the streets of the azerbaijan capital oh, but he's got an alfa romeo directly behind him closing all the time trying to pull out of the slipstream and take the lead Yano otmir waited for the move from blakely can blakely get it slowed down tanitsa in the mix as well as we go onto the penultimate lap of the race it's nicely judged but i think it's going to be less polite down at turn three is otmir taking the view that he wants that slipstream for the end of the race will we get another drag race later on or will we get the move at turn number three Otmir makes the move and Blakely defends it once again. The top three absolutely together as we have a lap and a half to go. So sorry, Alex, I was, I was looking at his wheel as he was <laughs> trying to overtake Blakely and he crucially turned his ERS off completely. He didn't want to take the lead, but then he saw Tanitza in his rear view mirrors that's probably deploying all of his battery power and it's just completely messing up with Otmir's strategy. He doesn't want to be leading into the last lap, it seems, but Tanitza, he wants to be taking the pair of them. So this is absolutely <laughs> scintillating stuff and I have no idea who's going to win. Tanitza very much still in this fight. How much? How much power does Tanitza still have to use? Because we know Otmir has a lot left to deploy when we're on the final lap. Will he choose to go early? Will he choose to go this time? Or will he decide to go at the last possible time? So, Blakely, Otmir, Tanitza, what a final lap we're about to have. Up next, after this, the virtual Grand Prix, the penultimate virtual Grand Prix of the year. Not long before we get back to the real thing. Nicholas Longay with a three-second time penalty. Now, here comes Tanitza with a good run. The top three in a battle for the lead around these streets. It has been another thriller for P1. But this time, it's Otmir getting closer, but he's got nowhere to use it. Little bit of a tap. Not able to use that momentum that he clearly had. Blakely defending well. There's another tap. Just a reminder that he's there. Blakely slightly wide. And this time he returns to Fable. Will that give momentum to the Ferrari in P3? Yes, it will indeed. We're about to go three wide for the battle for the lead. Otmir up into the lead. Is he going to bring Tanitza with him? Yes, he is. I think that's going to be the inside line. And Blakely, after leading, might well be about to head down. Has that given an opportunity with Blakely and Tanitza getting into each other? Have they? He just handed victory to Jano Otmir, who appears to have taken the lead, which will win him this race because Tanitza's now up to P2, but battling corner after corner with Blakely has allowed Otmir to head clear down the road. And on the final lap, I don't think we're going to get that drag race to the line for P1 because Otmir has played his tactics to perfection. Well, uh, I'm going to have to slightly disagree with you there, Alex. I think Blakely is going to be fuming with Otmir, who just nudged him into turn two, unsettled the racing point car, which then al allowed Jano Otmir to have the DRS, have the run, and then he said, thank you very much. Tanitza got involved as well, but for now, Jano Otmir will take the victory. Who's going to finish second? So a battle for P2, but it's Jano Otmir who took the lead on the final lap after that nudge on the racing point. And Jano Otmir will take it through the final corners on board with the Alfa Romeo driver who wins on his debut for the team. And Blakely's closing in, closing in, closing in, closing in. Wait for it. He's ahead and it's P2 for Lucas Blakely who takes it on the line. Jano Otmir beats Lucas Blakely who snatches second place from David Tanitza. Enzo Benito away from all of this drama in P4. And a thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining race has been won by the driver on debut, Jano Otmir. Used a little bit of argy-bargy but got the job done. And that was thrilling stuff thrilling stuff oh brilliant brilliant racing from the top three there classic stuff in the esports
Definitely classic stuff. I folded my arms. Very defensive there. There's a lot to talk about. Um, but I'll tell you what, great work from Matt Gallagher and Alex Jakes. A great race. It, it was, seemed a four-way race with Enzo Benita, Jano, David Tanitz and Lucas Blakely. But um, Jano Watmir doing it on his debut. It doesn't get better than that for him. Unbelievable. I'm just pushing myself back off the edge of my seat because that's where I was for the whole race. Amazing stuff, wasn't it? And good on Watmir. I mean, yes, bit of argy-bargy, as they say at the end there. But uh, yeah, he, he made it pay. And to, to, to win on his debut, under an enormous amount of pressure. Magnificent from him. Yeah, and again, a, a bit of a return to form for the Ferrari drivers with uh, Enzo Benito and David Tanitza. Just as it came into that last lap, just a little bit of that turn. Yes, there was a little bit of contact uh, on, on Lucas uh, Blakely. He might feel aggrieved, but then he ended up finishing second. But it was nail-biting right towards the end. Yeah, and uh, Tanitza will be ruining the, the missed opportunity there because he still hasn't got a win this season. It looked like he might be able to do it today. You couldn't rule him out at any point. In fact, the top three were just so bunched up right until the last lap, you know, anything could happen. I think that Blakely will be uh, disappointed. Um, he, we thought early on that he'd played a blinder with his strategy. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, he just had that frustration at the end because we know that uh, winning in Monaco meant so much. And if he'd taken the win again here, it would just cemented his position as really striding out in front of the rest of the pack. Yeah, but it, what it also shows is Jano Otmir coming back. Uh, it just proves how talented uh, sim racing is at the moment in the F1 esports. It just shows that you have a bit of time off. Even Freddie Rasmussen, who we expected he's won twice so far in the pro exhibition, uh, didn't, didn't finish, and even did Marcel Kiefer. The mm, Red Bull will be yeah. very disappointed with that. Um, Rasmussen, as we look at classification now, actually, um, Rasmussen not finishing, but uh, we knew how good he was last year. He won it, but there you go. It just goes to show the person, uh, Jana Otme, who didn't have a good uh, turnout, 14th last year in Baku for the F1 Esports Pro Series, showing that th there's not much in it between these drivers. I mean, I say it time and time again, but it just blows me away. Just the margins between them are just so minimal. We which means that you can never give up. You've got to keep pushing because you never know when you're going to go from the back of the grid to the top. And as you say, for the Red Bulls, well, it was like 2018 all over again from the real world when uh, Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen both crashed out of the race. It was a shame for the Red Bulls not to see the chequered flag. But, you know, as we've said before, small mistakes at Baku uh, result in big consequences. And you've just got to keep your nose clean and see that chequered flag. But, yeah, an amazing race. Yeah. Kept so us on our toes, didn't it? All the way through, I have to say, we just sat here just monitoring, uh, trying to make uh, furious notes here. It's interesting for the Williams, two brand new drivers come in and, and they didn't uh, do themselves any injustice or, or at all with their performance. Shinaka Clay finishing in eighth and in ninth you've got Roy Arnott's uh, and just showing, hey, we, we can be in the top ten as drivers and, and they'll get more used to that competition and competing but that's great for them um, and, and then also you've got Nathan Moore back down there but Jana Rotman, debut from him, it, it really is fantastic uh, stuff from him. I think from every single driver it's so important for them to be sending out messages to the teams constantly reminding their peers and the teams themselves how good they are and how important it is to constantly get in great results but yeah Magnificent race. Yeah, so of course, uh, David Tanitz are having pole. Uh, Tom Zilla, uh, it was all go in, in that first turn there. Uh, uh, but just just fabulous to watch. And I think that they, they handled this. And it's interesting because I've been watching all week them putting in times and getting their practice up to speed. And they were incredibly fast. Danny Berezny, though, early doors dropping right back down mm, to, to as 90. As did Brendan Lee. Yeah, and I, and I feel like Matt and Alex highlighted it, saying that is not what we'd expect to see. But it's for anybody to win, but they'll be very frustrated that they got caught up early doors. Absolutely. You know, a real shame for them because, uh, as I've said many times, you just make these little mistakes and the consequences are big. But, you know, you have to say for Otmir, he didn't take his foot off the gas at any point. He constantly kept them under pressure. Um, and then just when it mattered most, right at the end, he, he, he waited to pounce and then made it pay with by getting that victory. And it was really interesting because Lucas Blakely, back in Monaco, made a fantastic strategic pit stop uh, and it almost uh, paid off for him today, yeah. winning. Uh, he, he led over Jana Rotmir. We thought at one point maybe uh, he's been held in the pits. It wasn't, uh, as Matt Gallagher pointed out, just, just maybe a graphic glitch there for a second. But 
Lucas did enough, but strategically, it's one of those races, again, where you just have to be on point. And uh, there's a lot that can be learnt maybe going into later on in the season in, when we start up again for the F1 Esports Pro Series. Yes, I mean, every single one of these races counts in building that experience. And they'll take everything away from this, learn from it, build on it, and, and hopefully come back stronger for it. Yeah, I don't know about you, Natalie, but I was just thinking at this point, looking at the drive there, Lucas Blake just bouncing off the side again, that the damage that must have happened there with, with a slight collision. But I mean, I, I thought one of them's got, surely one of them's going to spin at any moment. That's how close <laughs> they were uh, to, to the barriers. But um, but you have to say, deserved win for Jano Otmir, but it was a great battle between him and Lucas Blakely. And, and this is the penultimate race. Uh, we'll I obviously... can't believe that. Sorry, I just thought I'd just throw that I in know, just towards the end. I know, but heartbreaking. This has just been brilliant. I know I, I want to get back to the real racing again very soon, and it's just a month to go until we do. But to think that that's just gone so quickly. And, you know, I've said it time and time again, every week, in fact, the graphics are just mind-blowing. They're so brilliant. I saw a little puff of dust blow up there, and I was like, hang on a minute, I'm watching a real race here, surely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but uh, Matt also said earlier on, juggling uh, th that, that tactic of, of sitting behind in the dirty air, but that doesn't seem to happen towards the end. Hopefully we'll get a, a chance to chat to the winner, Jana uh, uh, Otmir. But instead, why don't we ask uh, Lucas Blakely how he feels after that race? Uh, Lucas Blakely, uh, I have to say, congratulations back to back. Uh, fantastic races from you. How did you think that race went? Speechless. He's speechless. Uh, Lucas That's Blakely, how it feels. are you there? Oh, well, he's, he's not there for a second. As soon as he is, uh, we'll get him uh, on the line. Perhaps but he's a bit stroppy about the contact at the end. Yes, Maybe. indeed. That could be a situation. Um, listen, we are wrapping things up on our penultimate race. Uh, fantastic stuff from all of the drivers today. Jano Watme getting that uh, win. Interesting enough, when you look at that, Freddie Rasmussen, two wins for him. Lucas Blakely with a win. Uh, Brendan Lee with a win. Marcel Kiefer and now Jano Watme. It, it's interesting to say David Tanitza was that driver in the F1 Esports yeah. Pro Series who dominated but it's interesting to see that all of these talented drivers it, anyone could win this but if you were looking at that you wouldn't be surprised if there was another brand oh, no, new winner absolutely. in our last race and David Tanitz will hope that it is going to be him um, yeah if only we could have that variation on the top step of the podium in the real racing it'd be great wouldn't it um, but yes we've got one more chance for them to do it in Canada next week. OK, well, listen, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us in the F1 Esports Pro Exhibition here from the home of F1 Esports. It is, of course, the Gfinity Arena. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Uh, I just need to say a massive thanks uh, to Alex Jakes and Matt Gallagher up in the comms area there. Just a cheeky little wave from both of them. And a massive thank you to Natalie Pinkham joining me down at the desk. Right, up next, of course, we'll be back for another Pro Exhibition uh, in seven days' time. But between then and now, uh, we have the F1 Virtual Grand Prix. We're going back to Azerbaijan. Hopefully you'll come and join us. We'll see you again soon. Four five lights are on. It's all to race for. Coming to turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's a 